Every week there are players on the waiver wire that people pick up, and their performance alone either notches them a win or a loss. For me personally, last week I picked up Damian Williams, and he of course had a 91 yard touchdown run against my Vikings. This video will be a bit of a change from the content I usually do, as I usually do bold predictions for the week, or big fantasy player projections for the week, but we'll be looking at players who can help your fantasy team win if you have those dreaded week 10 buys, and there are 6 teams on buy this week including Zach Ertz Eagles and Deshaun Watson's Texans. So you're more than likely going to have to go to the waiver wire in at least one of your leagues. Before we get started though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. Starting this off with the quarterback position, and this may be a surprise, but Sam Darnold wouldn't be a bad pickup for week 10 for a few reasons. As of Tuesday morning, when I record this, he is owned in just 16.8% of ESPN leagues. He gets to play the Giants who are on a day short of rest and a defense that gave up 3 passing touchdowns to Dak Prescott in week 9 and over 340 yards and 3 touchdowns to Matt Stafford in week 8. As far as one week rentals go, there are a lot worse out there than Sam Darnold in week 10, who since seeing ghosts against the Patriots on Monday night a few weeks ago, has put together two 12 point performances but should be in line for at least an 18 point game this week if not more. If Darnold isn't your guy for week 10, I can understand that given his history, but another quarterback that wouldn't be a bad play for week 10 is 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. As of Tuesday morning, he is owned in just 33.5% of ESPN leagues, and with the week he just had, I'm sure it will go up by a lot. Seattle's defense simply isn't as good as it used to be, as they gave up 335 yards and 2 touchdowns to Jameis Winston in week 9, and 460 yards to Matt Schaub in week 8. I'm not a huge Jimmy guy by any means, but a defense giving up 795 passing yards in the previous two games is enough to reassure me to start him if you are able to acquire him before he gets scooped off waivers by somebody else. Moving to the running back's position, and the first player that would be a good one week rental is Dolphins running back Kalen Balazs. Mark Walden is going to serve a four game suspension, which in turn gives Balazs a lot of opportunity, especially this week. They combined for 19 carries last week with Kalen having 7, and with Walden now being out, Kalen's opportunities should only increase. Balazs will play against the Steelers, defense that gave up 89 yards rushing to Marlon Mack last week against the Colts and another 27 to Paris Campbell. Balazs is owned in only 8.8% .8 of ESPN leagues as of Tuesday morning. For people that have big running backs out this week, Balazs may be your guy for week 10. The next guy who could be a good pickup for week 10 is Bucks running back Ronald Jones. Ronald is coming off of a game where he had an 18 67 and 1 split and has had double digit carries the past two games. The double digit carry should be expected going forward as Bruce Arians said he is their guy. Ronald has had the opportunity and whether he will make something out of it or not consistently is to be determined. He plays a Cardinals team this week that gave up over 100 yards rushing to the 49ers team last Thursday night. I want Jones to succeed as a player, and if he will, it starts this week. He's owned as of Tuesday night in 38.1% of ESPN leagues. Moving to the wide receiver position, and with DeAndre Hopkins, DJ Chark, and Julian Edelman, and others on bye weeks, you're more than likely going to need a one-week starter in one of your leagues. The first player we'll look at is Vikings wide receiver BC Johnson. He is owned in 1% of ESPN leagues, and with Adam Thielen doubtful Sunday, he will be the Vikings' second receiver behind Stephon Diggs. BC has caught a touchdown pass in each of the last two road games, and should receive at least 5 or 6 targets against the Cowboys on Sunday night. Whether he'll do anything with the opportunities is to be determined, but there are definitely worse options than BC in Week 10. Another receiver who would be a good pickup, and as of Wednesday morning he is owned in 27% of ESPN leagues, is Colts receiver Zach Pascoe. He had a 5-catch, 76-yard, and 1-touchdown performance in Pittsburgh last week with backup quarterback Brian Hoyer playing most of the game. In Week 7, he had a 6-catch, 106-yard, 2-touchdown performance, so he has shown he can put up big numbers. With T.Y. Hilton expected to be out this week and maybe a few more weeks, the downfall is there was a game between these two performances where Pascal had just 1 catch for 6 yards, so he truly is a boomer bust player for Week 10. There were other players that could have been discussed, such as Daniel Jones, Trey Edmonds if James Conner is out, and AJ Brown of the Titans. No disrespect to them, of course, I just decided to include other players in the video. That's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Again, thank you for watching, and have a great day. Skull Vikes, let's beat Dallas.